we follow wind. Three unlikely companions journey across an African desert. We're never gonna make it. That's like walking from New York to Miami. Where they discover a world of friendship and danger. <laughs> it's the adventure of a lifetime. We can do it. We can do it. Disney's a far off place. It's the film that made us laugh and made us cry. Now share this touching Disney classic with the whole family. I never saw such a dog. You will never see another one like him. The story of one of the bravest dogs in the Old West, Old Yeller, only on the Disney Channel. Sunday, it's a rip-roaring world television premiere making its mark on the magical world of Disney. I can draw faster, shoot straighter, ride harder than any man alive. Straight from the storybook comes a movie that's gonna have you believing in some very tall tales. Paint my toenails and curl my hair. The Patrick Swayze is the most writing hero <laughs> in the world television premiere of Tall Tales. Sunday at 7 p.m. 6 Central on the magical world of Disney. Monday, it looks like wedding bells in Avonlea. Yuck. I'd very much like you to be my maid of honor. Oh. But not everyone is thrilled. I really made a mess of things. I was the one that wanted them to get together in the first place. We'll discuss this in a civilized manner. Why don't you discuss it with her? She's the only one you care about anyway. Will Disney keep Muriel and Clive apart? Why don't we just call the whole thing off, shall we? Find out Monday at 8 p.m. 7 Central on an all-new Avonlea. Summer's almost over. Waiting to go back to school. Going a little longer. Down to your local Toys R Us or Kids R Us. Look for this display and pick up an official entry form. <laughs> then watch the Disney Channel free preview August 22nd through the 26th. Kids are us, which will come in handy when you're back in school. We'll also be giving out 10 first prize Go Wild treasure trunks filled with cool stuff. Like a Pico system from Sega. A talking Buzz Light here in Woody from Six Way And cool new clothes for school, like these from Little Levi's Jeans. We'll also be awarding 500. Wow. Yes, I said 500 Crayola Tabletop Kids Easels. Time out. Let me get this straight. So be sure to enter the Disney Channel Go Wild Watch and Win sweepstakes at Toys R Us. It's gonna be wild! The following presentation From Disneyland in Southern California, it's Inside Out. The weekly show that keeps you up to date and takes you behind the scenes. With your host, Brian Leary, George Foreman. Coming to you this week from the happiest place on earth, Disneyland in Anaheim, California. Please welcome Brian Leary and J.D. Roth.
Good times roll, Southern California. I'm J.D. Rock. And I'm Brian Leary. Let's hear it for the Brass Brothers Band. Yeah. We're here with our friends, Captain Hook, and the very adorable Mr. Smee. High five, Smee. Nice <laughs> job. Welcome to Disneyland, everyone, or should we say Dixieland? Because we're here in the fabulous New Orleans Square for a jazzed-up edition of Inside Out. New Orleans Square is a Disneyland original. You won't find it anywhere else. Not even New Orleans. Jiddy, um, I've got a letter, or actually rather, sure. Cap'n Hook's got a letter from one of our viewers here. Thank you, Cap'n. Okay. The letter says, it's from Mimi Smart of Marin County, and she says, um, dear Inside Out, is it true there's a special restaurant at Disneyland that you have to be a member to get into? Uh -huh. uh, well, Mimi, it is true. And you don't have to take a word for it. We've reserved to take Disneyland's exclusive club to race. Make sure of all the technological magic behind that nighttime spectacular phantasmic. Yeah. Also in George's corner, the big guy, our co-host George Foreman, is going to be the engineer of a real locomotive. This is the Disneyland Railroad. You know, to become a railroad engineer, you have to have years and years of training. Or be a co-host of a TV show like me. Well, looks like my Disney watch tells me it's time for this train to hit the track. All aboard, go! Okay, Engineer Bill, I need to know how do we run this thing? First thing, the brakes. Where are the brakes? Well, Engineer George, it's very simple. Right here in front of you, this brass handle device is your brake. All you have to do is pull it towards you, drop this train. And when you want to go, you release it by pushing away from you. In order to get this engine, this engine to move, all you have to do is back on the throttle by squeezing the clamp, pulling back gently. Now, this is not like a car where you can step on the gas and it'll take off. You have to feather the throttle, pull slowly and release, and then pull slowly and release. And no whiplash for our guests in the cars. We don't need that before a fight. <laughs> What is this beautiful thing up here? Well, that's your speed tack up there. That's just to give you an indication of how fast you're going. We don't try to race around Disneyland. We have guests and we want them to see the show. So we try to keep our speed down to between 10 and 15. Wow, what a beautiful machine. Okay, let's go. Pull back on it. Grab this one. Release it. Pull back just a little. Now get some back. A little bit more. That's it. Go back and forth a little bit. Not too far. Not too far. Just a little bit. Tell me, is this a real train we're riding on? This is a real life steam train, George. This is one that's 70 years old, and it is. <laughs> These trains were really built at uh, Disney Studio. Oh, yes. Two of the engines, including the one that you're sitting on, were actually working engines that were used in industry. The other two engines that were out here were built as replicas of what. Uh, Walt Disney had in his backyard, which were miniature steam engines. Walt Disney, who was an engineering uh, hobbyist, built two of the engines. He completely uh, put them together. These are Walt Disney's love of his life. Walt Disney was the primary reason that the trains are here today. takes a leisurely cruise around Tom Sawyer's Island. And that's where J.D. is to give us a behind-the-scenes look at Disneyland's hottest nighttime show. Multimedia. Everyone thinks it's the newest thing in entertainment. But here at Disneyland, they've been doing that for over 30 years. And what's got to be the ultimate multimedia experience is hidden right underneath this boat dock. They got computers, fireworks, lights, singers, dancers, stunts, fiber optics, lasers, and a 70 millimeter film which is projected onto water. This has got to be the ultimate extravaganza ever. It's called Fantasmic. Come on, we're going underground. Whoa! Oh, 
Okay, we're now underground, right here. Mike Williams, how you doing, Mike? Good, how are you, J.D.? He's the production manager for Fantasmic. Now, this guy right here, forget James Brown. This guy's the hardest working man in show business. Mike, you gonna show around? That's right, we're gonna take it. Let's go. We're inside the cider, it's the heart of Fantasmic. It's where all special effects will come from. Uh, like over here, this is a flame cabinet. It monitors the fire effects used in the show. Fantasmic is controlled by one master computer, and this is one of the subcomputers that helps monitor. All right, uh, what do you say we head way down deep? All right, let's go. And how far down are we going? We go about five stories when you go all the way down to the bottom. And is that five stories underwater? That's right, five stories underneath the water. Oh, this is cool. Yes, this is our laser table. Jerry's here, our uh, laser technician here on Fantasmic. We've got two lasers that make up all the laser effects. They all emanate from here. It takes a lot of adjustment, a lot of time. And How does it work? It's a series of two lasers, and they bounce off the, the mirrors in, in a sequence. Oh, predetermined. All yeah, they're all little mirrors, predetermined by the computer, and that creates the color and the intensity and the different fiber effects that we use. Now, a laser that's only maybe eight or nine feet long here is how big out there? Oh, well, it can stream infinity and get straight out into the sky. We're traveling about another two stories down, down wow. to the up. We handle a film and some of the hydraulic effects. And the major part of Fantasmic are the images that we project on the uh, water screen. And this is where the film emanates from. It's 70 millimeter film. It was uh, specially made for Fantasmic. One of the spectacular parts about the film is that these are all film images from the original Disney classics. Uh, I think rolling by here, we're seeing clips of fireworks from uh, Fantasia. And later on, it moves into a sequence of flowers, which were also parts of uh, a nature movie that Walt Disney did uh, back in the 40s. This is one of our large lighting towers that uh, we use on stage during the show. We've got about 79 robotic lights in the show. Uh, they do different effects from putting uh, different pictures up on the water, generally change the color and add a lot of movement and kind of rock and roll feel. There's a lot more to see behind the scenes of Fantasmic. So I'll be back with Mike in a minute. Good morning. This week at Disneyland, celebrate a Disneyland classic summer, featuring more spectacular entertainment than ever before in its history. You'll find your favorite Disney characters several times daily in the Lion King celebration and take part in the festivities at the Hunchback of Notre Dame Festival of Fools. The fun continues with the spirit of Pocahontas at the Fantasyland stage and Fantasmic nightly on the rivers of America. Disneyland has always had a big river and a Mississippi sternwheeler. It seemed appropriate to create a new attraction at the bend of the river. And so Disneyland's New Orleans Square came into being. When Disney created New Orleans Square back in 1966, they didn't just make it look like New Orleans, they made it taste like New Orleans too. They got gumbo, Monte Cristo sandwiches, and fritters. And my stomach says I should eat this whole entire thing. But nothing says New Orleans like the Dixieland music of the Royal Street Bachelors. Hey, guys.
Okay, it's a spectacular summer afternoon. People are already gathering for the Lion King celebration over at Main Street, USA. And we're walking down Royal Street, right next yeah. to the Pirates of the Caribbean, to check out one of the least known attractions right here at Disneyland, Club 33. I'll ring the bell. Let's go. Okay, come on. We're going to tell them you're with us, not to worry. Club 33, name of your party, please. Uh, yeah, it's JD and Brian coming in. Two thousand friends. <laughs> here we go. Good afternoon. Hi, this is Mitch Henyon. He's the major d' here at Club 33. Now, Mitch, what's a private club like Club 33 doing in the middle of Disneyland? Well, what we were originally to be was Walt Disney's private entertaining area, where he would entertain royalty, dignitaries, movie stars, and recognizable VIPs in a quiet, serene atmosphere away from the bustling streets of New Orleans. Recognizable wow. VIPs like, uh... Exactly. Yeah. Well, can you give us a little tour? Sure, if you'll follow me right this way. Cool. After you. This Great. lift here is a replica of one in Walt Disney's favorite hotel in Paris. Really? He offered to purchase it from him, the owner, but he would not sell. Uh-huh. So we had his Imagineers go over. They took wood shavings, they secret photos. They sure did. <laughs> Voila, an exact oh, replica. Yeah. Everybody out. <laughs> Over here, we have an actual movie prop used in the movie The Happiest Millionaire with John Davidson, Leslie Ann Moore, cool. Fred McGrath. The actually, door is really heavy. It's actually a uh, beveled lead in glass there. Call my agent. <laughs> this is our trophy room. Some of our two dining rooms. More in full, kind of a hunting lodge feel. Absolutely, yeah. This used to have Walt Disney's trophies that friends have given him over the years. Mm -hmm. Deerhead, Moosehead, we also had a six-foot mammoth test that was found in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Now we have actual artist renderings of the Jungle Cruise done by Harper Golf and Mark Davis. Those masks, knives and sheaves, and walking sticks are from the Mali tribe of Southeast Sudan and Sahar regions. An interesting thing about this room, if I can direct your attention, if you look in the chandelier, you'll notice there's a microphone hanging in the center. No. Oh, yeah. Walt Disney used this for humorous purposes, where he would uh, listen in on his uh, private family and uh, guests that he would have. He would use this vulture above your head here to speak to them while they were dining, kind of an interactive kind of thing that he Does would do. Does it still work now? No, it, the system's been disconnected since it was only going to be used for Walt Disney. Yeah, Walt well, did make everything, turned everything into a ride. Basically, yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> entertainment while you're dining. This is uh, what we call our lounge alley. Most of the artifacts in this room uh, were purchased by Walt Disney when he toured New Orleans with Emil Curry, our decorator. What's this? This is the harpsichord, one of the uh, custom items that he purchased. He actually had a gentleman named Colin Campbell, a Disney artist, paint this hand painting of Jackson Square looking across the Mississippi in about 1812. Wow. And it works? It works. It plays. You want to sit down and play a little? Well, you know, I would normally sit down and jam out a tune, but my stomach's growling, so let's hit the buffet. Oh. Right this way. Jam out a tune. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is, this, great. this is my favorite part of this job, the eating. Sundays, Tuesdays, and Fridays is our normal buffet days, and this is the buffet that we always set up. Oh, this is great. You know, J.D., you can come back again. You don't have to, you know. I'm going to come Sunday. I'm going to come Friday. <laughs> I mean, today you can And come I'm going to come again. Tuesday. Okay. Shrimp. All right. <laughs> How perfect. They all have a couple lobster tails, okay, Mitch? Okay. Enjoy all you want. Oh, sure. Now it's Brian holding up the line. Uh, Brie, come on. <laughs> I'm, hold on. Just, just excuse me while I get oh. my stuff. This is so <laughs> good. It is. It's great. We'd like to tell you a whole lot more about mm -hmm. Club 33, but it's not polite to talk with your mouth full. Not good. <laughs> I'm here at Disneyland New Orleans Square train station with another fun fact. Here's something I bet you didn't know. Hear that sound? It's Morse code. It's tapping out the speech Walt Disney gave the day Disneyland opened. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. And here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America, with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. Thank you. That's another Foreman Fun Fact from the Foreman Fun Fact Bow. Let's rejoin J.D. as he gives Fantasmic the inside-out treatment. Part of the magic of Fantasmic is that in the daytime, Tom Sawyer's Island is a playground for, for all of our guests. Well, we can see all the kids running around, having a good time. Absolutely. At night. What happens at night? We uncover it all, we turn it all on, and you get Fantasmic. And it's showtime. That's right. 
Every day, in just three hours, the crew transforms this frontier playground into a complex, high-tech stage. Computerized pyrotechnics pop out of the old dock. Lights and lasers appear like magic from under rocks. The familiar becomes fantastic. It's a pile of logs by day, underneath its lighting equipment. Rowboat, you might go uh, rowing on the river. Right. Underneath it, it's full of lights. Logs by day, lights by night. Huh? That's right. Keeps the magic going. Incredible. Right here, we've got one of our projector ports. In the daytime, it's uh, rock work. Right. And at nighttime, it drops down with a counterweight system and exposes the uh, film glass where we project the film from behind the glass. That's incredible. John's here loading up the pyro barges we use for the show. How many fireworks go off in one show? Uh, per barge, there's 16 cues per barge, and there's six barges out on the water itself. And then we have about two dozen cues on stage itself for the show. Now, when this thing blows up, this is this gold glitter. What does this look like in the air? This will be a plume of just like pixie dust or gold glitter just flying in the air. How high will this thing shoot up? Uh, it gets up to about uh, 70 feet in the air. Really? Yeah. And when you connect that orange strip, does that connect it with the computer? This electronically hooks it up, and uh, the computer will search out for it and uh, find out which is programmed, and it'll fire right on the beat of the music for the show. Oh, so it syncs up to the music? Yeah. Right to the... Everything's tied together. Some more fireworks we got here? That's right. These are our flame mortars, red and green. They make your eyes go blind. They're so spectacular. This is a part of Maleficent. This is, she makes a grand entrance every show. Another one of our effects that we use it makes it look spectacular for lasers and lighting. This is smoke. Created all around the stage. And we've got seven smoke machines. It creates a big swirling effect of the lasers and the lights. It makes it look great. I see some bubbles in the water. What's coming up? In the daytime, we have the river lifts, which stay underwater. That's so that the uh, water effects are out of the way of the boats that work during the daytime. Uh, what we've got are the mist screens and the fountains and where the pyrotechnics attach and some fog effects. In addition, to make the fountains look spectacular, we've got underwater lighting, special lights that come underwater. And then, with all the extra robotic lights, they make a spectacular fountain effect like you've never seen anywhere. With all this going on, it's hard to single out any one effect. But one of my all-time favorites is where they actually project movies onto these water screens. This is one truly awesome effect. So the water actually sprays up through a pump, and that's what makes the screen? That's right. You mean the water is not being sprayed onto an actual screen? No, the water is the screen. The Kidding. film's projected onto it, and there it is. Mickey magically appears. Well, there you have it. An inside-out look at the behind-the-scenes and the below-the-scenes of Fantasmic. Hey, I showed you enough about this show that you could do this whole show in your backyard. But you're going to need a hat. This week at Disneyland, another Disneyland summer classic, the Main Street Electrical Parade, celebrates its farewell season two times nightly. And continuing through August 17th, the Disneyland All-American College Band performs at various locations around the park. This annual educational program selects college music majors from around the country to entertain guests of all ages. Later this season, through September 2nd, Fantasy in the Sky fireworks light the skies over the happiest place on Earth. This annual classic celebrates summer nights at Disneyland with a mixture of music and magic. Well, that's our New Orleans gumbo edition of Inside Out. Yeah, we want to thank our co-host, the big guy, George Foreman, for helping us stir up the pot. <laughs> Next week, we'll be back in Florida, keeping the summer sizzling with an all-new Inside Out. Hey, Big Dave, give me five, buddy. <laughs> oh, everyone say, see you next time. Ready, go. See you next time.
For your free Disneyland Southern California vacation planning guide, call us at 1-800-605-1234. Accommodations provided by the Disneyland Pacific Hotel, Disney's newest hotel in Southern California. If you have any questions or comments or just want to talk to us a little bit, write us at Inside Out, P.O. Box 10,000. 1675 Buena Vista Drive, Suite 505, Lake Buena Vista, Florida, 32830. Or you can visit us online at www.disneychannel.com.